So when getting stronger, most people start to neglect actually getting faster. And that's one big mistake that a lot of people make with training. And today I'm gonna to show you how to use speed bench correctly and do it right. Now in bench pressing, most people ask how much can you bench? How many reps can you do with 225? But what you don't see a lot of people asking is how fast can you move a certain weight? And that's what we're gonna get into today. So as you can see in this basic physics equation, we have force equals mass times acceleration, okay? But the trick is, is that this is actually in some ways much more important than the mass. So mass is actually a component of how much can I lift, right? So if somebody asked me how much I can bench 1RM, right? This would be an indicator of 1RM. How much mass? I didn't ask you how fast you could move it. I asked you how much you could move. But when we train speed benching, what we have to realize is that speed benching has everything to do with acceleration, and that's why the percentages have to be right. So force is our major objective. And now that we've kind of figured out that acceleration is one of those key components, if not the component, what are some rules that we need to understand in order to have a proper speed bench setup? Well, the first thing is our major goal is to try to hit one meter per second of speed on that bar. One meters per second of speed is insanely fast. You want to know what one meters per second is supposed to look like? Watch my speed bench videos on Instagram. But enough of that. The trick is, is that 1.0 meters per second is insanely fast, almost punching speed fast. And that's what you're going to need to do to make sure that acceleration is your key for speed benching. What does that entail? Usually for most people, moderately to heavy trained, 30 to 40 percent of 1RM is going to be what you can probably do for 1.0 meters per second in speed, okay? So whatever you have, let's say you bench 300, you're probably only going to be able to use about 100 pounds to 130 pounds on the bar to maintain a 1.0 meters per second. Now this also includes bands and we're going to have other videos to show you how to set those up and do that correctly. But in general, most people to maintain a 1.0 meters per second bar speed are going to fall between 30 and 40 percent of 1RM. So in speed benching, we have the weight set at about 185 to 205 pounds. That's usually what I use for speed bench. Keep in mind that usually in a given year or part of that year, I'm everywhere between 570 and 615 on the bench press and I'm only using 185 pounds. Okay, let that soak in for a second. 185 pounds, I can do more for speed work if I wanted to. But the big trick is it's not sustainable. If I go heavier than about 200 pounds for an extended period of time, I start to get a lot of overuse problems, i.e. pecs get too tender, elbows start to get hurt, the wrists start to give me problems. All these are the things that I've dealt with in the last 25 years. And what I've found is that if I keep the speed work around 185 to 200 and don't go much above that very often, then what tends to happen is I get a little bit more explosive and a little bit stronger and a little bit faster all year round. So remember, it's not what you can do sometimes, it's what you can sustain for long periods of time. All right, so now the big thing with speed work is, is that most times you're gonna use a straight bar. You can use a football bar, you can use a fat bar, you can even use camber bars occasionally. But most of the time you're gonna use a straight bar, but there's a way to make a straight bar different constantly to keep your body not only guessing, but keep overuse problems down to a minimum and keep you progressing. And what that is, is changing the grip around. So when I'm getting ready to bench, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll do thumbnail where the knurling starts. So this is grip one. Grip two would be right where the thumb meets the knurling. So we just went out about an inch each arm. And then the next grip would be pinky on the ring. That's about as wide as I'll go for speed work because I want to keep it in my triceps. But as you saw, I had one, two, three. Now those look like very fractional movements, but if you do a set one here, set two here, set three here, then set four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, etc., what you're doing is you're getting a little bit stronger in all areas. Now how is that important? Well for power lifters it's important because you don't get the overuse injuries. For strength sports of football and any of those other rugby and all these other sports that require a lot of upper body power you're going to have strength in different areas constantly. So if somebody can be strong here, 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 anywhere I want to put my hands, I'm pretty strong. 
that means that my strength is possibly more transferable to the field. So if you're training athletes, then make sure that you don't use just one grip all the time. And that's a big, big component to making sure that speed work stays moving in a positive direction year round. So now what I wanna give you guys an example of is this me doing 185 with no bands or chains, stone cold. I did speed work yesterday and I'm gonna show you what this bar speed should look like. That's how fast speed work should look. Now what you're gonna notice is when I put bands and chains on here, my speed will not change, but the amount of work that I have to put in the bar will. So now you're gonna see a different angle of the exact same weight you just saw, and I'm gonna move my hands out almost two fingers, which should change, you know, if you take somebody that's really strong and you change their grip out two fingers, it should look drastically different, and what you're gonna notice is it's not going to. So now what we've done is we went from 185 to what I normally use most of the time to 205. Now this 205 is totally usable and you're not gonna see a change in bar speed. But what I have found in the speed bench especially is that if I go a little too heavy for a little too long, my max day 72 hours later gets completely affected and actually goes backwards. So remember that your speed day should make your max days get stronger and better, not overtrain them or make them worse. So what you're gonna see here is this 205 is gonna move as fast as 185 did, but I would not be able to sustain this workload for more than a few weeks. I love the Ultra Human Tau tablets because I take one right before I work out and I notice my energy level goes through the roof and I don't have the big drop or the jitters after training. Okay, so you saw speed work and what that speed work should look like and give you an indication of how much weight you should use. I am a 600 bencher and I use around 185. You also saw that I could put 205 on the bar and move at almost the exact same speed, but if I use 205 for too long, I would overtrain and I wouldn't be able to sustain that workload. I have found over many, many years that 185 is completely sustainable and builds upon max effort works three days later. Now, some of the new videos and some of the old videos you need to watch, the old video you need to watch is what would you do before this speed work? And that is the winning warm-up. So go find the winning warm-up on YouTube and then stay tuned and look out for how to properly set up bands. If I put bands on this bar, I'm not gonna change the weight on the bar, I'm just gonna put bands onto it, but I'm gonna show you how to set those up correctly on the new video.